T. Garcia Education aims to empower people through educational services and other motivational content. And the goal is to create a community of lifelong learners who adopt a holistic approach to education. And founder Tanisha Garcia joins us for more. We say welcome, Tanisha. Thank you for being a part of it. Hello. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Now, I want to start off by choking fire. Is this just another school that happens to be online? No, it definitely is not just another school. Uh, Tigas Education is more like an educational platform because I think when people hear the term school, they just think, okay, it's either primary school or secondary school, it's classes. Um, and it's really, when you hear school, you think more academics alone. And actually the platform is like you mentioned, it's a, it's an educational platform that aims to empower people through educational and motivational content. And we adopt a holistic approach. So basically we're trying to change that whole traditional, um, understanding that education is purely academic so we don't call it a school we say it's an educational platform so that makes me feel that you're actually kind of turning the paradigm of what education should be on its head because many times people hear education they think school so when you say education what what are some of those factors that are encapsulated in that word Right, so when, when we, or when I say education, what I mean by education is, uh, is the constant uh, quest for more knowledge in virtually any field. It does not have to be academic, it can be anything basically uh, to just gain more knowledge, to widen your understanding and just increase your standard of living, increase your, your whole mental capacity of everything. So we seek more education or we seek education in daily activities. And it's so much more than just, you know, going to school and learning math and English and science. It's really education is what we as humans need to acquire to really live I and thought... to just increase our, our standard of living, basically. All right, so we're looking at some we're looking at some footage now where we see you uh, with a class dealing with it, but at the same time, so I guess the this platform or this educational platform would have had its genesis before the COVID nineteen pandemic. So give me a little history of T Garcia Education, please. Okay, so uh, well, in the clip where you see me teaching, that's actually me in my actual math class, and that was filmed before COVID, of course. Uh, so I am a teacher. I have a degree in education with uh, a specialization in mathematics. Now, for as long as I know myself, I've been an educator, and I really, I love everything about school, but more so, I love everything about education. And uh, as I grew older, I realized that there was so much more to life than just uh, academic qualifications. So TGAS education came into being because uh, basically before COVID happened, I was already teaching. I was teaching privately in my own private school, per se. And um, when COVID-19 happened, I said to myself, OK, what? Uh, what am I going to do? There are no physical classes. How can I continue teaching? But also what, what 2020 did was, uh, it actually shook all of us, you know, it, it knocked us off of our feet. And in the early parts of 2020, there was so much negativity happening all around us. Uh, you would go on social media and there was so much negativity, hatred, all of those, uh, horrible things and I felt as though I needed to create some sort of space to inject some positivity back into the into the sphere uh, through my work and also through my beliefs of what education is. So at first I was just creating, um, I was going to use my social media and basically a website to, uh, uh, to advertise my services as well as to write and share content on many different topics such as mental health such as emotional health um, fitness and everything basically just to like put back some positivity out there and uh, when i did that uh, a lot of my colleagues my my past teachers some of my past schoolmates 
they came on and they were like, T, we want to be a part of this because I was blasting stuff through social media. I started virtual classes for free. Um, and that first week when I did classes for free, there were over 200 students all over Trinidad in my virtual classes. And I hadn't known anything about virtual teaching before. Um, but I was just determined to get myself out there and to really, like I said, share some positivity. So when my colleagues and stuff saw what I was doing, they were like, hey, I, we need to be part of this. So I said, of course, come on. So what we'll do is uh, these kids need to be taught. So we'll use Zoom and we'll use all the online resources. We'll conduct classes. But more importantly, we need to start by putting content out into the environment that would motivate people, that would give them something to look forward to and raise their spirits throughout 2020. So that's basically where it, it started and, and where we came from. Now, I want to dive a little deeper into the support that you would have gotten from some of your colleagues who said that they want to be a part of it and talk a little more about the team. But in terms of your personal uh, evolution, for want of a better word, how have you had to change to deal with the new challenges of teaching remotely or teaching online, especially when you, you're saying that you have people from different parts of the country who are logging into these classes? Yeah, actually, it's not only different people from the country, but all different people from, uh, we have students from the US and we also have students from Canada right now. Um, how did I deal with that? Uh, basically, before, actually before COVID had happened, I was trying to find a way to connect with students in my quest for what I was uh, terming borderless education, uh, because I like to travel. And uh, the thing is, if you travel um, and you have to teach physical classes, obviously it can't happen. So I was looking into that online teaching for quite a while. Um, what, uh, how did I, uh, can you just repeat that question? Sorry. Were there approaches that you would have had to change in terms of, you're not right in front of me, so I need to change the way that I do this, the way that I interact with you, the way that I uh, inspire you to engage? You know, you said you've been, you've been looking at uh, remote teaching for a little bit, but are there specific things that you needed to tweak one time, one time, one time to say, okay, well, this is how we're going to be dealing with the online teaching? Okay. So online teaching, of course, is totally different to, to physical teaching. Some of the challenges that you face, actually, is, uh, OK, as a teacher, when you're in front of a class, you can see when students do not understand. You can tell from their facial expressions. You can tell from their body language if they don't understand. So that was definitely one of the first challenges that uh, we had to, that I had to overcome, not being able to, to feed off of the energy of the students because it's totally different when over the computer and in, in, a, in a classroom environment. So um, the thing is that you would think that the, the solution to that problem is just having students turn on their webcam. But the truth is uh, you sometimes it makes students feel very uncomfortable to turn on their webcam. So it had to do, you have to like engage a whole lot more than you would in a normal classroom. So you would have to be asking a lot of questions and we would, I would use a lot of content, a lot of videos, a lot of um, uh, images, games, interactive, a lot of interactive things to really get through to the students because like I said, not being in front of them, not being able to really look at their facial expressions and stuff, it, it was definitely a challenge. But I would say, however, teaching math has been quite uh, enjoyable online because we get to use a lot of the virtual resources for topics that students typically have problems with uh, understanding from the abstract nature of it, like graphs and geometry, those sorts of things. It's really, it's really, really uh, nice to teach it uh, online. And the students enjoy it quite a bit. Also, students, they, they are in this age where students adapt way faster than adults. And that's because they are so much of the electronic content. They're always on it. They're playing games. They're on social media. So the students adapted a lot faster than the teachers. So when we started to speak their language in terms of the whole, um, the whole internet space, the whole electronic uh, way that they communicate, uh, it actually was quite a thrill for some of them. And in terms of that thrill, we want to continue speaking about it when we return from the break. We are speaking with founder of T. Garcia Education, Ms. Tanisha Garcia. Stay with us.
Welcome back. We are speaking with founder of T. Garcia Education, Tanisha Garcia. And Tanisha, yes, you are a math teacher, but T. Garcia Education deals with much more than math. So I, I want us to get into some of the offerings that you have and the things that people can avail themselves of, please. Okay, sure. So currently, we have uh, academic services uh, from preschool straight to tertiary education. So at the preschool level, we have physical preschool classes because uh, uh, we don't believe that uh, the online classes for preschoolers is very uh, appropriate. Uh, parents have been complaining, and I just at that level of development, students are not really, it's not so much about the academics, it's more about their social skills and developing their motor skills and those sorts of things. So we have physical preschool classes for, uh, yeah, physical preschool classes. And then for primary school, we have uh, online individual tutoring. So you can, a parent can come onto the platform and they can register for online tutoring for their uh, primary school students from first year straight to standard five. At uh, the secondary school level, there are the options of online group classes as well as individual tutoring. And it's the same thing, you go onto the, onto the platform, you choose the subject, you choose your teachers, and you start from there. At the tertiary level, we also have individual tutoring. So for students in different areas at the tertiary level, they can book uh, a tutor to help them, let's say, complete a paper or you know, work on a project, prepare them for an exam. Now, on the non-academic side of things, because like I said before, we are trying to promote a holistic approach to education because education deals with so much more than just your academic qualification. Education is supposed to prepare people for life, to lead better lives and to just achieve a higher standard of living. Uh, one of the things that we um, have right now is professional resume writing services. And that actually came into being because uh, the, we realized that a lot of students coming out of secondary school and even tertiary, tertiary school, tertiary institutes, uh, they, do not how, they, do, they do not know how to really showcase their unique skills and abilities. And uh, we felt as though professional development is an area in which we lack in secondary school and even at the tertiary level. So we offer that service. We are also, we're also starting shortly uh, agricultural services. So we have Mr. Riyad Mohammed who's coming on the platform to give courses in different fields in agriculture. And there's so many more different fields that we're just going to get experts in the fields to give, you know, to do short courses and help anyone who wants to, to learn in that field. You know, sometimes, sometimes at the, during your secondary school life, many students do not really know what they want to do, you know? And a lot of students just, they, they don't do well in our traditional academic setting. Doesn't, and that, and what happens when students don't thrive in our, our academic settings, when they don't do well in the typical math and English and at CSEC, it really diminishes their self-esteem. So we wanted to create this platform where there are so many different fields from with so many different experts, real life experts doing the job to really show people that your value is not determined based on how you performed on a math exam when you were 16 years old and you didn't really know what you wanted to do. So it's really, uh, those are some of the services and we're adding more as we go along. Right now, we are in the age of the creative mind. So there are a lot of different creative uh, creative themes uh, of work that is gonna be available on the platform. Another major thing of the platform, like uh, uh, before, is that it uh, aims to empower people through educational and equally motivational content. So. The, the aim is for people to be able to come onto the platform, whether it's the website or the social media, and they should find something that uplifts them, something that motivates and empowers them, even if it's not an academic service and even for non-paid services. So those are some things that, that we have in the pipeline right now that we're working on. What's the, what's the minimum, or let me ask this differently, if you were to say, okay, let's create a program because there is a call for this on the platform. What's the minimum amount of individuals who would be calling for something like that for you to say, okay, well, let's take this into consideration. Let's move on it, implement it. 
Right. So uh, I think when I answer that question, I feel like it might be a crazy response. But honestly, once somebody comes to the to the platform and they express real interest in learning something, I start with my I start with my team and I ask. Do you know anything about this? Can you help me find some someone who knows something about this? And then we go searching to basically fit the the to the need and from even as little as one person because that's how some of the courses started. All right, now we have about three minutes more. There are at least two things I want to get into, and then I want to circle back to something that you said. Uh, with regard to the logo, I think the logo is very symbolic. What is the what is the symbolism of the tree? Because you also have a blog called The Tree. So I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you explain that, please. OK, so the logo, I, I mean, I spent so long trying to decide what we wanted to have as the logo. But basically, the logo is a tree. And in many different parts of the world, a tree is symbolic of life and growth. So the tree is really symbolic of uh, of that of growth through education of course you can see they're like little people in there um so i always tell people that uh, the first thing that you should aim to do is add value and uh, serve people so the people holding up the tree has to do with our our need to serve and add values add value to people's lives um and of course the pencil just deals with the creativity that we use uh, to, to do all of it, to tie all of it in. All right, and in terms of philanthropy, it seems as though there is an element of that to what it is you do as well. What, what, what does it focus on? What does it look to enact? OK, so can you just repeat that question? I didn't, I didn't quite get that. It seems as though you're also involved in philanthropy. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So. Uh -huh. The, okay, so basically, I come from very humble beginnings. I grew up in a single parent home. It was just myself and my brother and my mom. And uh, from a very early age, I realized that I was, uh, I had an affinity for knowledge, an affinity for education, uh, the academic side of things. So even though there were times when we were younger and we probably couldn't afford to, to even go to school sometimes, my mom had to choose between feeding us or you know educating us. And uh, still, yet still, I always, I always thrived and I always did well in school. And the thing is that we think that a parent should never have to choose between educating their child or feeding their child. And, uh, because of that, uh, we want to really use uh, the tool, use the education to reach people from many different walks of life. So the philanthropic side of TGAT education is that we tend, we're working on projects to work with underprivileged kids and also to just provide a lot of free content, free educational content, so that people don't have to just come on this platform and feel like they have to pay for a service to be empowered and to really benefit from our services. So we're working on, we have a whole side of the platform where we're working on charitable ventures to reach students and, and reach people from different uh, you know, walks of life. All right, in that last 30 seconds, Ms. Garcia, I just want you, I want to run back to the fact that you, you talk about our physical interaction with uh, nursery, the nursery level. Um, what kind of safety protocols, um, what do you have in place for that before we close? Okay. The preschool level, we only take uh, between, well, now at first when we just started, we only took uh, five, well, four students and the teacher, and now we have. Uh, increase it to eight students. So the students, they do wear their masks. There is, uh, um, we have them engaged in washing their hands. They use a lot of hand sanitizer. They, um, those are some things that we do. And uh, we do have like very spacious uh, classroom where they sit at least uh, six feet apart. So those are some of the that we have put in place for the preschool physical classes. Now, you would know, well, if you have young ones around you, it's very, very difficult to have them, you know, use a mask and even um, 
understand this whole COVID regulation. But if you make it fun, like if you make it a game uh, for them, they, they tend to, to really get into it. So those are the, the practices that we have in place for the physical preschoolers. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Garcia, and we want to thank you for the work that you are doing. On behalf of the entire news, we want to thank you for joining us on DK Rasta. Have a good night.